Hello everyone and welcome back to Critique Clinic. If you're new around here, this is our video series where we give feedback and advice to members of the Siege Studios community on their miniature painting, so hopefully they and you can improve your miniatures. No James this week, but don't worry, he'll be back in the next episode. We've got some really cool submissions this week, so let's get into the first one. We've got Scott Fraser, and you know both myself and James are suckers for Blood Angels, so I'll try not to go too easy on you. Uh, he says, I've been slowly working on a second edition artwork-inspired Blood Angels Dreadnought. The intention is for this to be my first competition piece. Uh, I'm sure I'll ask for feedback again further along, uh, but the decision point I'm at right now is if I add black flames to the right leg, uh, which is already there on other parts of the model. Cool, so I'll start with the main bulk of the of the miniature and we'll get into the legs in a second. Um, first of all, I mean, this is amazing, isn't it? Like the nods to the artwork is really, really cool with like the vibrant yellow and like the flames. It's a very, very cool like modernization of it. So I love what you've done there. Now you've said this is a competition, so I'm going to try and give you feedback as such uh, in terms of like just the refinement of the painting, because I think that'd be the most useful to you. Um, so that said, uh, apologies if this comes across as like a little bit nitpicky, but that's kind of the, the way of competition painting with miniatures. Um, the first things that stand out to me, there's a couple of little things in terms of like uh, just immediate sort of mistakes that I see. Um, it looks like you've used a transfer on the number two here, and I can see what appears to be some of the backing. Now this might disappear. I'm not sure if this is varnished yet, so this may well disappear anyway, but uh, I'm just spotting a little like faint white line here, which may need just like a little bit of touch up with some of that red just to get that eliminated, because things like that are what uh, kind of break the immersion for me personally. It's like it's the nod to this being a painted figure and it's a bit hard to get lost in it in that sense. Uh, the blends is, are really, really nice on like the larger surfaces, um, but I'm noticing like a little bit more roughness like around these sort of smaller shield panels on the front here. Um, I can just see sort of some of the individual stages. I think just glazing through this and just getting some more smoothness uh, just to sort of kill any of these visible lines I think would, would go a long, long way, especially because they're so, so visible and these are so, so smooth. I think they kind of stand out more because everything else is so smoothly blended. It makes them appear worse than they are, if that makes sense. Um, I love that you've done like the chevron hazard markings around here. I think that's really, really cool. Um, I'm not sure what your intent with that is in terms of like the vibrancy of this yellow being a lot, lot darker to this up here. There's a lot more like gradient going on with this um, in terms of just like the style of the painting. So regardless if you want this like a darker yellow for contrast, that totally makes sense. But this has got like a, a, a lot of tonal variance going across it. Like there's this nice soft blended gradient. You can see here we've got like a nice vibrant yellow and then down here we've got sort of the darker brown. I'm not really seeing that elsewhere on the miniature in terms of like the transfers, for example. I can see you've done a little bit of soft shading up here, but it doesn't look quite as drastic as the shading that you've done uh, elsewhere on the miniature. Um, the NMM looks like really, really nice. Like I couldn't, I honestly couldn't fault you. Like the contrast is really, really nice and high. Um, if, again, if I was to really, really nitpick, maybe just some of the blends around the darker shading could just be smoothed out a tiny, tiny bit. But in terms of like light placement, I think you're totally spot on. Um, also as well, like the little details, like the little Chevron has a cable around here. Really, really nice. Like just adding a little bit of extra visual interest. The way you've highlighted the lens is super, super clean uh, and everything's in line with each other. And then just moving on to the leg here. Um, you mentioned like about the flames. I don't really think that everything needs to be symmetrical. I think sometimes when things are overly symmetrical, that can kind of kill a thing. Um, there's a tendency with cool details like that to maybe want to overdo them. So maybe I would say to just leave off the flames and just have it on one leg. It makes it stand out a bit more and it like kind of draws your eye across the piece. That's just my personal take on it. Um, this is painted like really, really clean again. Um, the markings, really, really nice placement. The highlighting style is like very, very similar to the rest of the body. Um, it's obviously hard to see these in context at the minute because these are in sub assemblies. Um, again, I'm just noticing a, a little bit of a tiny, tiny bit of lack of smoothness. Just I can see some of the blending stages here. Um, when competition painting, it really, really, really is just all about the thousands of glazes of just, you know, basically colored water. It's a very, very big time sink. Um, Obviously, you want to get that overall piece to like a sort of finished state before maybe you want to go in and do some of that refinement. Um, but I do think it would go a long, long way. Edge highlighting is super nice and crisp and clean. Um, personally, I'm more of a fan of the, like the double, triple edge highlighted style. We've done all this on one axis, which I think is like perfectly valid. That's the way you've executed it on the rest of the model. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think maybe consider the fact that because you've done some of these blending stages, uh, doing like multiple stage, like chunky, thin highlight, like kind of glazing up through that. Um, I think that that could be nice on some of the parts of the panels. I don't think you necessarily have to do it everywhere. That's just my take on it. You know, your style is your style. That's totally fair. Uh, and then again, just in regards to transfers, I'm spotting like a little bit of uh, of some of the backing here. 
again, that may disappear with varnish. I can't see the model in hand, so that's not something I can really tell you. Um, touching up with red, uh, just going with that base mix, if you can't get rid of that with the varnish, um, or like Microsol, Microset products like that, uh, will help to dissolve the backing. Patate O says, been painting after a good few years out of the hobby, and this is my first attempt at a banner, trying to keep the muted tones, but I'm struggling to make the leather and wood browns look distinct. Feedback appreciated. Yeah, so leather and wood can be tricky because you are, especially if you're doing like a muted color palette like this, which you're going for, it's hard to make, as you said, like everything stand out still distinctively, but kind of keeping that darker look. If you're going for something like quite cartoony and very, very bright and vibrant, you can do a lot more with contrast, obviously. But um, I think the easiest pitfall that people fall into, and I think we're all guilty of it, is just using the exact same browns for wood and leather and just anything brown in general we kind of all have like a de facto go-to recipe um, but if you look online at like reference images for browns and uh, leathers in particular you often find that there's like a variety of tones because people would typically like dye and stain leather and then as well as that you've obviously got like age and wear and different types of leather will wear in different ways some will be like more orangey some will be much more pale so maybe have a look around and experiment with using like different tones in the leather because i think wood is something that Yes, there is a variety in wood, but like typically I think you'd expect to see something kind of more along the lines of this. Immediately looking at your model though, like all the details are really, really nice and cleanly blocked in, which is something I really like to see. Um, everything's like very clearly visible, like what uh, materials you're trying to make everything read as. So, you know, kudos, you've done a very, very good job. And typically my feedback would be to go like really, really high on contrast. But as I understand from the way you're describing this, you're going for like the muted sort of uh, more understated look you want this guy to look a bit more gritty i can totally get that and that's evident with like you know just the state of the banner for example having these like sculpts that are sort of ripped and teared um the freehand is like nice and clean um i think that it's mapped out nicely and it's fairly symmetrical and it's obvious what it's supposed to be that being said i think there's like a bit of a mixture of opacity going on so where you're doing this directly over black it's quite clear that you've got some additional coats going on some areas uh, and not others. So some there's a lot more of that black bleeding through and the red isn't quite as vibrant. Um, yeah, fair enough. You might have like a bit of variety in tone that you'd expect to see of something aged. But um, I think this, in this case, it does read as just like not full opacity paint, if that makes sense. Um, additionally, you've highlighted all of the black uh, on the banner, but there's no highlights on the red. Um, I know it's a very, very small like part in terms of the amount of footprint that this covers up on the banner. But, you know, there's a there's a black highlight going through along here. Uh, there's no reason why that shouldn't be going through the red as well. So like a little bright spot of uh, brighter red or up towards orange here, here uh, and here, just to follow that line going along there. And you can do a similar sort of thing over here as well. Um, I think something easy that you could do as well would just be to pick out some more of like the grain in the wood. So just using a brush to just like do some like little swiggle lines and things like that. Um, I think it would make that a bit more evident as to what it is and just make it a bit more three dimensional. Um, I really like what we've done with like the nice high, bright highlights on the silver to show like the scratching and things. I think it looks really, really clean. Um, overall, great job. I think that uh, just doing some additional contrast on the banner and bringing out some of the, the grain in the wood could help push this a lot further. Uh, and additionally, the base, nice and plain, fair enough. Um, but just like maybe some like small bits of visual interest like a little bit of dead grass or something like that i know you might not want to go for like something super vibrant but even just like some you know like i said some very very dead grass i think uh could just add some visual interest and just kind of make this fit into a bit more of the setting next up we've got pie masters who says my first iron jaws mini really happy with the face and i'm fairly happy with the yellow armor but it's my first attempt so feedback would be great and they said that they've really struggled with the axe blade so would love some pointers for that too uh, and then they state that they think they might have overdone the highlights on the black armor and the bone. Of course, we full screen this. Um, this is quite a busy model and there's a lot going on. So I'm going to try and sort of uh, pick apart each detail kind of one at a time um, rather than getting caught up in the sort of grander picture of it. Um, you said you struggle with the blade. Blood effects are something that I see overdone and uh, done in like a poor way quite often. Um, this is like perfect to me. This is exactly what I would want to see blood effects looking like purely because like the the splatter is really really fine it's really refined and it like extends up and gets sort of thinner as we go up to this upper area here it's really really nicely done i think that's so visually evident like that that is supposed to be blood sometimes people typically just get like some blood effects paints and just sort of gob them onto the end of the axe without like much care or thought and attention gone into it but i think this is really really nicely done and additionally i think that the fact that the blade is really really bright um does contrast really nicely against the model but Looking at the sort of weathered state of the rest of the armor, I think to me maybe the 
uh, parts of the axe that would see less use. So like obviously the cutting edge, you might expect them to be like sharpening it and things like that. So that's fair. This would be nice and nice and bright. But I think over here there was this is a big canvas for, you know, rust, um, grit, dirt, uh, verdigris, like adding additional tones. And I think the fact that this is just such a big surface and it's looking fairly plain and also it's looking fairly, fairly bright. Uh, while it does separate itself from the mini nicely, I think it's just like contextually a bit out of place with how the armor is weathered on the rest of the model. So if we go into the yellow, for example, I can see here that you've done like a lot of varied tones and effects and things like that, which I think is really, really nice. But again, like I just think it's just a lacking a bit of parity there for me personally. Um, the goods, like the leather, looks very, very evident it's supposed to be leather. If I was to nitpick, I would say that kind of similar to what I gave the advice in the previous one, there's a tendency to want to use like the same tones for everything. I think this part here is supposed to be wood, and then you've got the leather wrap as well. But then you've also got the leather on the wrist, and I think that there is um, a lack of contrast in these details, and they kind of all meld into one purely on that basis. This could have been an opportunity to maybe use like a black leather for the wrist to tie in with the armor scheme, or use a different tone of wood, uh, just slightly different to the leather that's on the wrap. Just to distinguish those details, I think would be really, really nice. Um, and then just to pull yourself up on the black, because it's something you mentioned that you struggled with, because um, it can often like stop looking black, as you've said. Um, I don't think this is an issue with like the colors that have used, but it's just the amount of like surface that the highlights cover. I think because there's there's so much of the black covered with the blue highlight, it starts to make it look blue. Um, if you're lacking the brush control to get these highlights finer and sharper and smaller, um, I think one thing you can do is maybe highlight less of it and just focus on the upper edges. So you could be picking out this nice edge highlight on the top line here, and then maybe a little bit on the knee and maybe a little bit on the bottom, and then maybe even use a softer color, so not this full really, really bright blue, maybe like a darker blue for the middle parts, and we just add that additional contrast, and it might make this read a little bit less blue and a little bit more black. But overall, it's a really, really nice piece. Like every, Everything's blocked in really nicely. It's very clear what it is. It's very clear that this is an orc in yellow armor. Um, all the details are blocked in really, really nicely and neatly. There's no like uh, obvious paint spills or anything like that. Got a really cool base with loads of stuff going on. I think that's really fun. And it's like, uh, as well, also kind of like relative to the sort of character nature of the AOS sort of more fantasy style models. So I think that's really, really nice. There's a tendency you see a lot of people doing like very, very similar basing between sci-fi and fantasy. I think they added the addition of like the little snail fella down here and stuff and like flowers and the plants. I think that that's really, really nice. Um, it contrasts nicely as well, uh, like with the red, but you could personally you could have maybe even gone uh, a little bit brighter with like the greens used i'm not sure maybe it depends on like, your army basing scheme because um, you've gone for quite a pale green for the skin as well so maybe just looking at color contrast between how the skin contrasts with the green on the basin because if you'd gone for a very very vibrant skin keeping this muted might have made a lot more sense but i think there's a lot of similarity in tones just overall on the piece and i think that you know you, you can totally use the same colors on a model but i think going for varied tones and vibrancies i think is a really really nice way to add visual interest well, firstly, a massive thank you to everyone who submitted for this episode. I hope that the feedback was helpful to you. I hope that if your models weren't submitted for this, you still found something valuable that you can apply to your own miniature painting. Now, if you would like to get your miniatures featured on a future episode for Critique Clinic, then head to the links in the description of this episode where you can find our Patreon. And as well as that, don't forget you'll get access to hundreds of high quality PDF tutorials. And there's some videos in there across a variety of techniques. We have masterclass tutorials, foundation tutorials on you know anything from a whole character to smaller details and how you can apply them to your miniatures. Some really, really great valuable information down there. Uh, don't forget you can also join the Siege Studios Discord, chat with members of the team and our community and engage with everyone in there and get feedback on your models as well. Uh, thank you everyone for watching. We look forward to seeing you in the next episode.